Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another Cave Divers React. My name is Gus. Hi there, I'm Woody. And today we're going to be reacting together, first time, to a video that has been requested hundreds of times at this point. It's been requested so much that I'm like, there's gotta be something valuable here, so I'm not gonna watch it, let's just watch it together and see. Uh, all I know is that this is in the open water, and I don't think the divers involved are cave divers or anything, they're just regular divers, okay. and they run into some issues, so let's see what happens. All right. Okay, so I guess they're in a wreck in Canada. Called the Little Parsons. The ship was launched on September 14th, 1868 in New York. Then it hit a rock and it sank. Discovery 63. 500 tons of coal. Wow. Hmm. Wow. No wonder why it sank. 65 feet. Not, Not bad. Perfect for uh, recreational divers. Yep. All right. Baptist Creation Minister dove the wreck side. Okay. Following is a record of that dive. Here we go. There's a lot of current. You see all the particles just flying through it. Do you see it? Yep. And obviously you can see the line is like at a diagonal, so that's telling you. They're always thinking about the water temperature. Yeah. These guys have no hood, no gloves, so. So I'll be in a dry suit. Alright, two knots is the current. to the bottom, so that's good visibility. Probably like 60 feet visibility. It's not bad. Oh, it's taking so long to go down though. It's clearing his ears. I guess so. Weight bell is shifting and water going in the mask. Yeah. That is one thing I enjoy about open circuit where you can clear your mask and no problem. In rebreathers, you clear your mask, you lose loop volume and you have to add and it's not as simple. He's struggling. Five feet. Oh man, it's halfway flooded. Blowing through his mouth. All right, I'm gonna pause it for a second. A mass clearing skill is done in the very first confined water dive in a swimming pool. Yep. It is common to have get a little bit of water in your mask. It is very easy to clear. Look up, push the top of your mask, and blow out your nose. Yep. A common mistake Gus alluded to is some people forget and blow out their mouth. Obviously, no air is going into the mask if you're blowing out your nose that should take just so you know why i'm reacting here is it shouldn't take that multiple times you see how he's struggling with it and maybe he's going to struggle more here's how long it takes mask is cleared so now that's interesting let's see what happens <laughs> he still has one blowing out his mouth out of his mouth. That's the problem. 
Yeah, the bubbles are coming out of his regulator, non-divers. That means he's not blowing out his nose. The mask will not clear. And he's lifting it up, too. You can see that he's lifting it up. This is a very basic skill. the rope but they don't have buoyancy they're just dragging on the bottom with all those muscles they're gonna destroy their wetsuit yeah, probably very overweighted look at that these things are like razor blades zero muscles yeah they're all over the very great sharp. lakes they actually make the water clearer they're filters they filter the water yeah you shouldn't be dragging your legs on them or hands or whatever They're evasive, by the way. They were introduced. Invasive, yeah. evasive, that evasive. They were introduced by accident from a cargo ship, from what I understand. Okay, what is that? Make it to the other line. Hmm. Current looks to be tricky because he's pulling pretty hard yeah and breathing hard i do like that they took the time to write down what's going on that way at least we understand like this guy's at the bottom that guy's not that kind of thing yeah. hey, the fact that he checked his air is making me think he's worried about his air yeah so i'm checking breathing a air. lot at least he's not dragging himself in the bottom so that's good he's pulling but oh uh, no he's dragging it. See how he keeps looking at his air? Yeah. That means he's running low on air. Uh, couldn't see it. Couldn't see it Where's the wreck? Oh man, do you see that weight belt? Yeah. Weight belts, everybody, was what they used long ago before integrated weights. These are for non-divers that I'm talking to. Integrated weights means they click into your BC now. It's breathing so fast. Listen. Relax. Calm down. Cool wreck, by the way. Looks like. Like if you were sleeping. By the Flying way, on the current. Yeah, they look pretty relaxed down below. Yeah. Vertical. Why was the decision made to go for a deep dive? And how did they make a decision? They just look at each other and they just made the decision. Telepathy, oh, uh, according to the video. Oh, they are no. caught in it. Oh boy! So they're overweighted. I guess. Yep. Is that the issue? What's he doing? Uh oh. He's panicking. This guy's panicking big time. Oh no. I actually think oh, he's man, trying that to. That guy just dropped big time. I think he's trying to yell to the other diver. Yeah. Like, stop. Stop. Yeah. So, oh my God, look, just hand, 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 hand. Yeah, hang with me. They're way too far away as a buddy team. Oh, for sure. Narcolepsy. Like he's falling asleep? Isn't that what narcolepsy is? Oh, 
It's narc. Mm-hmm. You mean narcosis? Yeah. Not narcolepsy. Yep. <laughs> okay. Narcolepsy. Is... I thought narcolepsy is you just fall asleep, right? Yeah. All right, narcosis is science to say. Got it. Oh. But why is he not He's breathing next to his so body? fast? Oh my god. That's about a thousand PSI, it looks like, like a third of his tank. 110. He like leaps Keto. out of the water. Oh man. So we put on oxygen immediately. Oh yeah. Right to a hyperbaric chamber. Is he going back down? Yeah. I hope not. I think so. Okay, now. Nice. Ah! Doesn't look all right. Where's Paul's fin? Right. Fin oh, it's gone. I got you at 110. I got you because there's right behind you. Just above you? Oh, my words. Yeah, my thing doesn't even fit now. What thing does it? My cover ball. Oh. You're, you're taking on air. Just relax. Let's just let the... Uh... Oh, man. Are you trying for a record or something? No, I got caught up in it. I just saw you going deeper and deeper. Yeah, I know. And I, I thought I lost you. Not good. Not good enough. Uh, I, Lost the fan. Oh, no. eh. All right, hold on. I, I got to stop it here because two things. The first guy skyrocketed to the surface, and I want you to talk about why that's not a good thing. But the second guy showed up like it seemed like a minute afterwards. And if one guy skyrocketed to the surface... And we saw it because we saw all the way the ascent, all the way till he leaped out of the water. The other guy, there's no way he maintained a, a, an ascent rate of 30 feet per minute, 
made a safety stop, which because he went deeper than 100 feet, he should have been five minutes typically. Or a deep stop. Yeah. He just came out like a 30 seconds later, like, what's up? I just lost the fin. So none of them are stopping? Like, yep. what? Well, I was going to wait. You stopped it here. I have a couple of reactions. Number one is the comment that he, at, when he asked the question, what were you trying to do? Set a record? And I've seen this before. And people do that. Like, I'm going to get to go to, I'm going to go to my deepest dive ever. And they weren't, they didn't plan for it. They don't have the right gas for it. They don't have the right experience for it. That's not uncommon. It's actually extremely dangerous, but it's not uncommon. And then they kind of laugh it off because they're at the surface. But here's the problem. When you get the bends, which means that your bubbles came out of tissue solution too quickly, the bubbles are expanding inside of your body too quickly and you get bent, that doesn't happen immediately. You don't necessarily feel the effects of the bends right away or not just feel it, but you could have mental issues as well. Sometimes it takes a while to come on and you can die from it. So right now, they're still maybe not having any effects. They don't know yet. The other issue is they could have had a long overexpansion injury, but apparently they were breathing or they would have already been Blowing exploded up. and had an embolism and been dead. Yep. That one's immediate. That's immediate death. Yeah. Now they need, they didn't make any stops. I'm sure they oh. would have had probably at least a 50 foot stop. And then like you said, some a minimum three minutes at 20 feet or 15 feet, if not more. So they need to get on the boat and get on oxygen even if they're not feeling any effects. And Correct. this is a mistake that's often made. You blew up through this dive. You did not file the profile, get on oxygen, because we don't know when this is going to start to affect you. And we need now to already be, I would probably err on the side of a calling emergency first response and get them there because it was such a severe violation of that oh. dive. If it was just a little bit, like maybe they were going from 50 feet and they missed a safety stop only, but he flew up at, what was it? What did he say? Like 110 feet 120 a minute. 120 feet a minute. Which we go up under our agency, we say 30 feet a minute. So that's four times faster that's right. ascent than what's recommended. That's right. That's my reaction. We, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem, and they don't know it yet. Yeah. These guys don't know it yet. So finish it out. I'll be curious to see, does the problem now emerge? It's only 10 more seconds, so I doubt that we're going to get to see what happened afterwards. Okay. But. Gladly. Yeah, so we don't know. Um, we don't know what happened to these guys. After. We don't know what happened to these guys. But what we know is that, man... That that's that is the risk is to skyrocket. And I think and one of the things that I wanted to talk about as you were talking about, it, I started to think was, you know, when you're teaching scuba diving to new students, I sometimes struggle with explaining the idea behind not inflating on the way up. Like students don't understand that. And I think they don't understand it because when you start diving, when you're on your first class or second class or something like that, you typically hold a lot of air in your lungs like, without knowing. So what you end up doing is you end up overweighting yourself because you don't feel like you can go down. And it happens to us. And in some cases, even though I look at a student and I disagree that they need more weight, just to make them happy, I give them a little bit more weight because they cannot go down. They don't understand that they're holding their breath in. And it happens to me sometimes. Like if, I, if I'm if i talking in front of a crowd or whatever, next thing I know, it's like, I, like I'm full. My lungs are full. Like what? Why am I holding air, right? The excitement or whatever it is. It, it, it happens to you when you're scuba diving. So sometimes you tell students that you need to blow air. Just blow all your air out. Um, and then you won't need any more weights. But you get weights, you know, so you can go down. The thing is that as you, as you keep going through the training, you start relaxing. And that air goes away, and then you're a little bit negative, negatively buoyant, meaning heavy, right? So then when we say start going up and make sure you deflate, people don't understand it. They're like, but I'm negative. Like, I'm sinking. If I let air out, I am going to continue to sink. I cannot go up 
if I let the air on my BCD out. But the key here is that as you go up in scuba diving, we go up in a control manner. We perform a control ascent. And when you inflate your BCD, you no longer have control of your ascent. Your, the air is taking you to the surface. It's an uncontrolled ascent, which is what these guys just went through, and which is why they went up four times faster than the recommended ascent rate. Yeah. The, what I Look, I have taught hundreds, literally, of students in the open water. Yes. The number one reason that they can't go underwater is actually not anything to do with their breathing. What happens is you're going to see this. They're sitting there looking at you. They, you get your student in the open water and you see this. Okay? You know why I'm, my shoulders are moving back and forth? They're kicking. So they're blowing out. They do empty their BCD. You watch them blow out. <sighs> empty in it. And they're just like, I'm not going down. You're not going to go down if you kick. People can't tell what new scuba divers, they have no idea that their legs are kicking. So what I tell them is, if you feel me, I brief them before, right away. I know it's going to happen on dive one. Yeah. If you feel me, squeeze your knees together. Remember, that means you're kicking. Just stop kicking. Let your legs go limp and then blow out and dump and you're going to go right down. So instructors, don't, if you can, don't cater to them and automatically go put more weight in. I'm just talking about in the pool. No, no, way. I know. I know. Yes. But in general, I've just given you my, my view I don't do that. I'm like, stop kicking. We did a weight check already. I mm. already did another skill, which I don't need to explain here, but there's a skill to tell if you're weighted properly. We do that right away when we get in the open water dive one. And if you're weighted properly, all you got to do, you're, they're generally going to blow out. They're generally going to empty the air out of their BCD, but they are generally going to be kicking. Yeah. Grab those legs and all of a sudden it's... And I should have uh, added that level of clarity that what I was talking about when I said they can't go down, they need more weights, is on confined water, right? The first confined water that you do, the first confined water dive, you do it on the shallow end. So there's no way to do a weight check or anything. It's just you they cannot go down underwater to start doing things like cleaning your mask and like those first few skills that you do. So I tend to give them a little bit more weight just so they can relax. And later on, when we go into the deep end, they can do it fine. And obviously, once you're in, in the open water, like you said, first thing you do, weight check. You don't need more weight. Just blow the air and relax. And don't kick. And don't kick. That's right. Interesting video. Yeah, Dave, this one. You know, I'm, I'm going to say I would be shocked if these guys weren't bent from a ascent rate of 120 feet a minute. And they were down. On control. Yeah. It looked like air. Well, I look like they were diving air, not not enriched air. So that's yeah. even worse. And by the way, the other thing we didn't do a lot of commenting on on this was that's how easy it is to get caught up in current at depth and then get narked where you're confused. Yeah. And the guy's trying to scream to his buddy. Where? Why were they so far apart? Now, you can't be this far apart, guys, in recreational diving. There's no way sound this. The water's dense. Sound travels four times faster underwater, and it's bouncing around. He can't hear you. It's muffled. He's just hearing noise. Yep. So that is not going to help. So easily and quickly, you can get taken away by the current, and the next thing you know, I'm nowhere near my buddy, and I'm going down quicker and quicker. Now I'm confused because I'm narked, and I've blown through my no deco limit. He panics, he inflates on top of everything else. You're going to potentially get um, the bends or a long over expansion injury. So they violated a ton of rules. Right. I'm sorry to say. But I'm glad we get to learn from it, uh, learn, learn from them. Hopefully they yeah. went back and they were okay and they continue to dive. Um, but yeah, just uh, be careful about those on control. Yeah. Stay with your buddy. Stay with your buddy. And be really, really chilled. If you can, I mean, that looks like a dive that is not for the unexperienced. That's a pretty heavy dive. That's a lot of current. We would not take our our new divers 
in current to that level. Certainly not to that depth. We would not. That's right. going to take an at least an advanced open water diver that has both wreck and deep experience. So experience matters a ton. Comfort through repetition is the SSI saying. And they wouldn't be kicking. They wouldn't be struggling as hard, in my opinion, if they had a lot of experience on those kind of dives. You heard the guy say, what were you trying to do? Set a record? Yeah. So maybe he's never been below 100 feet even. It's right. kind of seemed like a novice thing to say. Yeah. Like a record? Like that's kind of a new uh, if you're trying to set a record. Yeah, we don't know what conversation happened on the boat, right? They no, would be like, just... what's the deepest you've been? 90? Oh, you know. Uh, but... Here we can go deeper and know, get a new it's... record. Experienced divers just don't yeah, typically don't say, I'm doing this to set a record. I'm doing it because yeah. I want to go see the wreck. Right. And I'm prepared for it, and I planned this dive. That That's that's my reaction that's coming to me more and more now as I'm sitting back thinking about this. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. And, of course, share this video with others out there so they can learn as well from our reaction and from Whatever you share, right? When you share the video, you get to add your own comments and be part of the team, right? We're all reacting to it together and learning together. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thumbs up. Like, give us a thumbs up. <laughs>